You're watching KCMI TV. Well, I'm glad you joined me today, and um, I want to talk to you about probably for Christians, um, and I know it is for me the biggest battle that you and I fight in our walk with the Lord is unbelief, and it is a constant harassment of the enemy. Um, Faith is the language that the Holy Ghost speaks, and unbelief is the language that that the devil speaks. And you know, it's I've I've preached on faith, taught on faith, and uh, you know we're in a faith journey uh, right now in Regen. And many of you, uh, if you're serving God, you're on a on a faith journey. But you know <clears throat> that. The, the key about unbelief uh, is hard to find. And it's, you know, we, people all the time say, you know, I believe, but nothing's happening. And why, why is it so hard to believe? And so I, I want to give you a couple of keys today. Um, I want to start off, you, you have two natures. You, you have the old nature that's the unregenerated man before you came to Christ and gave your heart to the Lord. And then you have the new nature of Jesus Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away, all things become new. So um, I think I want to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This will maybe help you. Uh, I've just been going over this in my spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And um, verse, I think it's 14. Um, says, but the natural man, and that, that's the unregenerated man. That's the man that operates out of the senses, of five senses. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. One of the mistakes that I think that believers make is we are trying to teach the old man how to believe. And there are other verses that deal with this principle, but the old man in you, and Paul said, I have to die daily. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the life that I live now is Christ in me. And so uh, this is why prayer is so important and fasting is so important and reading the word and going to church. Uh, all of these things are death instruments to the old man. And so uh, this verse here is declaring a principle. He said, your old man or your natural man or your natural mind cannot receive the things of God. They are foolishness to him. And so I, I think, and, and, and I know this from my own life, that over the years we have failed in the realm of faith because we are trying to believe out of a natural mind, and it is impossible. Your natural man is never going to have faith. And uh, so this is, this is why the only way that you will ever have faith in your walk with God is it has to come from your spirit man. Um, in, in Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 36, it says this, um, Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Um, your, your natural man 
cannot receive the things of God. And so the Lord says that I have to give you a new heart. Why would God have to give us a new heart? Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so faith comes from the realm of the spirit. In Romans chapter 10, I believe it is, it says this, uh, he who confesses with his mouth and believeth in his heart that Christ and that he is the savior of the world and you shall be saved. It's most, most of us think that if we confess it with our mouth and we declare, well, I believe this, then it should happen. No, the Bible says that you have to believe it in your heart. And you say, well, pastor, how do I believe in my heart? The, you have to start believing out of the new creation. It has to come out of your spirit, man. This is why the faith walk is so difficult for so many people is because they're trying to walk in the realm of faith out of their own mind. Uh, and you say, well, you know, can you go to heaven with, with unbelief? I, I don't, I'm not sure you can because Revelation says this, says that the fearful and the unbelieving shall be cast into the lake of fire. Fear and unbelief are cousins. They walk hand in hand because when unbelief gets a hold of you, the next thing that happens is fear gets a hold of you of what happens if this doesn't come to pass. And the old man, he can't get it. Uh, there's one verse, I think, let's see if I have it written down here. Um, This is in Mark chapter 8 and verse 18. It talks about, he says, they have ears, but they cannot hear. And he said, they have eyes that they cannot see. And unbelief needs to see it before they believe it. That, that's why we call Thomas Doubting Thomas. And the Lord told him, he said, Thomas, you believe because you've seen but he said, blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. And so uh, when, when you're walking with the Lord, you have to walk in the realm of the spirit. This is Romans chapter eight is a tremendous chapter on the spirit that he who is led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. The only way that you can ever have faith is to shift over and your spirit man begin to rule your life. Um, I've thought about this over the years, why, why so many religions and so many people in Israel fell into it too. They, they made idols that they worship. It wasn't, the, it wasn't that they didn't want to worship other religions, whether it's the Buddhists and the Hindus and all of, all of these other religions. It's not that they don't want to worship. It is in the heart of man to worship God. It's that they could not worship a God they could not see because their worship was coming out of their own nature. And so they made themselves idols of stone and wood, or they worshiped the heavens because they could worship as long as they could see what they worship. Paul talks about, he said, we love him whom we have not seen, whom we have not touched. And so uh, this, is, this is why praying in the Holy Ghost is so important because it, allow, it opens up the realm of the spirit. You have to, to be able to see it in the spirit before you see it in the natural. Unbelief wants to say, I, I'll believe, but I have to see it first. Well, then that's not faith. Um, faith so limits God. In, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 58, it's speaking of Jesus, said where he was, he did not hardly any mighty works because of their unbelief. And the first thing that, that unbelief does is it affects your relationship with the Lord. 
uh, there's a verse that says in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you, and boy, this is a strong word here, lest there be in any of you a evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is evil. It is, it is the it is the mouth of the devil. And this is what it says. It says, when there's an evil heart in you, it will make you depart from the living God. Romans, the fourth chapter, verses 17 through 21, is dealing with Abraham. And it is talking about, you know, God made him the promise of the child. And now, Everything in the natural in his life that could have brought about the promise is dead. Whenever God does something supernatural, he waits till man's ability to do it dies. And Abraham is 100 years old before the promise comes into being. But I love this. It's talking about Abraham. It said that he did not stagger at the promises of God. God makes promises that are so beyond the ability of man that unless your spirit man, unless your spirit man is the one that is believing, you'll never get a hold of it. And unbelief will make you stagger like a drunk man. If you've ever seen a man who's who's inebriated, uh, he just he he can't walk a straight line. He just staggers all over the place. And uh, I think it's in, in Jude talks about clouds without water, just drifting about. And uh, I, I I think of this verse. It says um, in Luke chapter nine and verse sixty two. It says, "No man putting his hand to the plow." looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Unbelief, you know, you put your hand on the plow and you're believing that God is going to do something and then unbelief comes in and will tell you it's not going to happen and you take your hand off the plow or you take your mind off of faith and you look back. The scripture is very strong. He said, people who vacillate are not fit for the kingdom of God. It takes powerful men and women for the kingdom of God. And so uh, how how do you believe in pastor? Well, uh, there's a key verse. Uh, in fact, I think we'll just read it. This is in Romans uh, chapter 12. And I love this verse. It says, be not conformed to this world. In other words, he's saying, don't let your natural man shape you like the world shapes or things. It says, be ye not conformed to this world, but then he says, but be ye transformed. Transformed literally means that there's a new creation that takes place, that you are changed, that you no longer are conformed to the world or its ideologies or the way that it thinks, but you are being transformed. There's a transformation that's taking place. But the Bible says the way that that takes place is by the renewing of your mind. And so it's not the natural mind. See, that's why the Lord says you have to renew your mind because your natural mind cannot receive the things of God. And so the Lord has to renew your mind. And you say, well, then how does God renew my mind? It's by very intentionally reading the word of the Lord, intentionally in your prayer time telling God, Lord, I need you to help me to be able to see by the Spirit. Give me eyes to see. The, that's what the Lord's talking about here. He said, when they, they have eyes, but they cannot see, he's talking about the natural man. He said, the natural man can see in the natural realm, but he cannot perceive or see in the spirit realm. So spirit eyes, you will never receive anything by faith until you first see it in the spirit. 
You see, that's just the opposite for the natural man. He has to see it in the natural before he can believe that God did it by the Spirit. And so in prayer especially, this is one of the keys to, to great faith is in prayer, you have to begin to declare things that are not as though they were. That's what Abraham did, uh, speaking things that are not as though they were. So, you know, I'm thinking that Abraham, you know, he's, he's 95 years old and he knows his loins are dead, but maybe he just walking along, he just puts his hand on his abdomen and he's declaring in the name of the Lord that there is a son going to come forth out of these loins. What was he doing? He was speaking something that did not exist in the natural realm. Everything that God does that's eternal has to come out of the spirit realm, not out of the natural realm. God does not share his glory with anybody. And if God was saying that things that are done by faith, 50% is done by you and the natural, and then 50% is done by God, then God only gives 50% of the credit. He says, no, I will not share my glory with another. He waits until everything in your life, there is no more possibilities. And then when all of the possibilities in the natural realm that the natural mind can see is dead, but see, you're not seeing by the natural eyes. You're seeing by the eyes of the spirit. And you begin to see in the spirit realm the finished work of Jesus Christ. And you begin to see the things that God has declared for those uh, that, that have him. And so um, these eyes, boy, they'll get you in trouble. That's why a lot of times, you know, when you're praying, you close your eyes. Because when you close your eyes, you begin to... To, to focus on the things of the Lord. Um, th I think the, the greatest mistake, and I know this is for me too over the years, is I am trying to have faith by my natural man, and it's impossible. And as long as you try to have faith in your natural man, you will never, ever, It'll discourage you, and eventually you'll say, well, I just don't believe that, that God does those things. And the moment you believe that, then you begin to go backwards. It affects your prayer life, and eventually you lose out your walk with God. <clears throat> the Bible says this about you and me. The only way that we can walk with God is the just shall live by faith, and that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so to those of you that are listening to me today, that you are in dire straits and everything in the natural realm says it cannot happen, quit thinking in the realm of your mind and begin to pray, God, renew my mind. Give me the mind of the spirit. The, uh, as Paul's talking about, he said, we have the mind of Christ. And with Jesus Christ, there was no limitations. We never find in the scripture where Jesus is praying to the Father and saying, I need you to help me and give me faith so I can do the miraculous. He was unshakable in his faith because he knew his Father. So I want to encourage you that um, step out there by faith and every day, I'm doing this every day, declaring things that are not as though they were, but declare it out of the heart, out of the regeneration of Christ. Declare it out of the renewing of your mind that God can do these things and that we will enter into the rest of God and that we do not fail as the Israelites did. The Bible said they entered not into the promised land because of their unbelief. I refuse for this hour for you and I not to enter into the fullness of God because of unbelief. We curse it in the name of the Lord. And Lord, I just pray right now 
God over your sons and daughters. We just begin to speak, hallelujah, the spirit of faith. We command this evil spirit of unbelief to begin to leave their lives. And oh God, that you would, Holy Spirit, as those hear me pray today, God, renew their minds. God, renew their minds. Give them a new mind and a new heart. God, that's a spirit mind and a spirit heart that they would be able to recognize and visualize and see those things that you have prepared for us. We thank you, Lord, for the miraculous, for the supernatural. Precious name of Jesus, amen. Well, always remember this. If God be for you, nobody can be against you. You hold your ground. And I'll see you next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org.